feel free to add to what I'm about to say. The meeting has begun. Gavel has been slammed. Perfect. In addition, we will be recording this meeting. So if you have any questions, problems, or concerns about being recorded, please make sure you tell Roger Fung because he'll figure all that out. Roger, have you officially started the recording? Right, then I am going to turn it over as your president to our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, Elaine, for stepping up at the last minute to be our Toastmaster of the day. Take it away, it's all yours. Greetings, online presenters, honored guests, and replay viewers. We're getting a lot of replay viewers, so I wanna greet you too if you're watching it later on. I'm Elaine Nieberding. I am Vice President of Membership for Online Presenters for 2019 through 2020. I'm very honored to be filling this role and stepping up tonight as your Toastmaster of the day. Now, things can get a little nutty sometimes with filling the roles, so I thought it would kind of be fun to um, select as a theme for the day, Almond Joy. Now, why would I do that? Well, I would do that because July 8th actually has this funny holiday assigned to it called Chocolate with Almond Day. So um, let's not go nuts over the controversy mounds or Almond Joy, but just have a great time nourishing each other this evening with great speeches, great listening, and great conviviality. Now, our meeting this evening will have its three components. The first part is speeches, of, uh, and there will be three presented. The next part is table topics, where different people are called upon to give extemporaneous responses to great questions. And lastly, we have an evaluation portion. For each of these areas, our Participating members get to cast votes for best speech, best table topics presenter, and best evaluator. And then we close the evening with feedback from our guests. But before we begin the speech portion of our program, I would like to go around to the uh, different people who are filling in for our functional roles for the evening. And I would like to start out with Timer Niklakani. Tell us about your role this evening, please. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. Today it gives me great pleasure to actually time everybody. Time is really important. What we have to do is make sure that we don't take up anybody's time unnecessarily. It's really good to speak concisely and succinctly. All those prepared speeches, We'll have three times against the agenda. And what I'm going to do is with my background, when the first time is reached, I'm going to hit the green screen, like just like that. And then when the second time is hit, then it will be yellow. Mm. And the third time will be red. And if it really does go over time, I shall do a woo 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 like this. There you go. How about that? Technology at its best. And obviously, before each round of speeches, uh, either yourself or myself can actually explain how long each person has. Back to you, Madam Postmaster. Thank you, Nick, very much. And now I'd like to move on to Deborah Spears. Deborah Spears is our uh, counter for the evening. Deborah, tell us a little bit about this role. Hi, <laughs> Hi I'm Deborah. I am the uh, counter, and I will be counting filler words. Sure. And she'll be giving us a report at the yeah. end of the evening. And I'll be giving a report at the end. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for stepping up to do this most interesting <laughs> listening job. Okay. Appreciate it. Next is a chat monitor, which is being um, addressed by Sybil. Sybil, tell us a little bit about the chat monitor. Okay. I get to watch what everybody's talking about. And uh, if there's any trends or anything really interesting, I will report them at the back of the meeting at the very end. So far, we've had a lot of comments about uh, Mounds versus Almond Joy. Sometimes you feel like a nut. 
sometimes you don't. Yep. Okay. Uh, our vote counter this evening is Chris Gold. Chris, tell us about your role, please. Gladly, Madam Toastmaster. Um, it is my job to count the votes and tell you how, who wins. So when it comes time to submit your votes, you do that via the chat and make sure to notice that you have the choice of sending a chat to everyone or click that little drop down and make sure to send it not to everyone, but to me. And I've made the word vote be the first word of my name. So you should be able to, to find it easily. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Jimmy Dent is our grammarian for the evening. Jimmy, tell us a little bit about this role, please. Okay. Yeah, I will be the grammarian tonight. I'm for both good grammar, colorful grammar, and picturesque grammar, and some poor grammar. And you want me to introduce the word of the day also, Elaine? Please do. The word of the day tonight is nutritious which is an adjective, and it means um, my mind, and it's um, nourishing and efficient as in food. So in my opinion, and so along with mounds and Snickers and other chocolate bars that have nuts in them and coconuts. And, so once again, we, we've, we've chosen not, this hasn't been a nutty choice for a word of the day, but appropriate choice for word of the day. Graham, can you please tell us a little bit about being the table topics master? Yes, Madam Toastmaster of the day, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who don't like table topics, ta, chances are you'll get one. No, seriously. Uh, table topics is to me one of the best parts of Toastmasters. It is the most likely form of speaking that we will be called upon to do in our regular lives. Uh, when the boss asks us to speak, it's not normally a five to seven minute presentation, it's two to three minutes to our team, you have to think off the top of your head. So I have come up with a series of related table topics tonight, related to our theme. I will be asking some of you to speak for between one and two minutes a little later this evening. Thank you so much, Graham. Now, because apparently I am a little nutty this evening, I can't recall. Did I ask you, Jim Gould, to describe your role? <laughs> Not yet. So you're on. Go ahead. All right. I'll be the watcher tonight. I'll be looking at the Hollywood squares in front of me and checking out your backgrounds and your green screens and, and just how you're paying attention if you have your camera on. Anyway, look sharp. Indeed, everyone does look sharp this evening. Thank you, uh, all my online presenters, Toastmasters, for your description of your roles. We're now going to move on to the speech portion of our evening. And first up is Antoinette Trim. Now, Antoinette Trim, joined Toastmasters in December of 2018, and we're pleased to have her with us. This evening, she tells us she is really happy to be a part of Toastmasters. Her growth is through, is through taking baby steps in her presentation skills, and she hopes to be a pro like many that she finds here in online presenters. She is currently working in the motivational strategies pathway. She's at level two, understanding your communication style. And here is Antoinette Trim. Give her a warm welcome for her speech, Personality in the Workplace. Good evening to my fellow Toastmasters. The name of my speech is personality in the workplace. Each, way, each year, workplace accidents result in thousands of fatalities, as well as millions of lost work hours and billions of dollars in expense. 
Furthermore, the majority of accidents affected by human error are often perpetrated by a comparatively small subset of employees. How many times you hear of an accident once or twice in the workplace and you'll ask, she again? Like if to say, well, like she's accident prone. However, there are five personality, tra personality tra traits. Personality traits have been some of the most commonly considered individual difference predict predictors of workplace accidents. There's somehow a relationship between personality and unsafe behavior practices. There are basically five pers personality traits. One, there is extraversion, you have agreeableness, you have conscious, conscientiousness, you have neurotourism, as well as openness to experience. Ex someone who's an extrovert, they're outgoing, they're spontaneous, they're bold, and they're fun to, to, to be around. However, extroverts place primary importance on the higher order goal of, a, of obtaining status or gaining social power and prestige. That goes as far as the extroversion. In other words, extroversion is positively associated with uns unsafe behavior practices in the workplace. The other personality trait is agreeableness. These people try not to damage, uh, should I say, social relationships. They put more emphasis on interpersonal relationships and as a result, they do not want to destroy them. And so they are very careful, they are very timely. As a result, conscientiousness is negatively associated with unsafe behavior. Neurotism. People who are high in neurotism are prone to anxiety, self-consciousness, and stress. But even though they, are, they have, even though they, uh, they display negative emotions such as anger and impulsiveness, they still want to be careful that they do not, uh, that they do not say do practice unsafe practices. In other words, neurotism is positively associated with unsafe behavior openness to experience. They are, say, broad-minded, artistic, who are high in openness. They are very inquisitive, they are adventurous people, and plus they are daring people. These individuals tend to be dissatisfied with routines. For example, they, even though you may tell them to do something, they would always find a shortcut in which to do a particular event. So, in other words, openness is, is to experience is positively associated with unsafe behavior. We also know of age. Age in tandem with the personality traits. We know also that young people, they are not, they are, they are bold. They do not consider safety. So when age is combined with various personality traits, this can be, have a negative effect on the way how they follow safety rules in an organization. Even though driving, for example, even though driving may be a, is, a, is done independently, but Driving must be done in relationship to others. In other words, when you drive, you must consider the safety of others. Personality, 
should proceed safety as opposed to safety in relation to behavior and preceding personality. Finally, we confirm that personality traits like agreeableness, consciousness, and neurotism remain influential in explaining variance in safety-related behavior relative to the simultaneous contextual influence of safety climate perceptions. What I want to say is that those three personality styles more or less would consider safety in the workplace. Thank you. Thank you, Antoinette, for that fine presentation. We're so glad to have you here speaking with us and appreciate your stepping up to fill this speaker role for this evening. Next, we have George Marshall with us. George, it is so great to have you back with us. George, uh, distinguished Toastmaster in District 57, led the very first Pathways pilot launch for District 57 in 2017. And he was and also one of the last launches for the undistricted clubs in 2018. He was also on the original team that persuaded Toastmaster World Headquarters to authorize online clubs. Way to go, George! In this talk, George is going to share a way to simplify picking your next path, well, in pathways, by showing how they fall into one of four groups based on their communications versus leadership content. This is easy way to pick a path. It's in the leadership development pathway, level one, mastering fundamentals, researching and presenting. Let's give a warm welcome to George Marshall. Thank you, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I am so glad to be here again today. I'm going to share with you some insights I developed. This is a research and presenting project and I certainly did a lot of research for this. I'm gonna share my screen and show you some of my points. So maybe you're ready to break pathways or maybe you know a new member who is having trouble picking a path. I've run into this myself. After all, we have, in the original program, we had everyone on the same manual. In Pathways, we have 11 different paths to choose from. For some people, choice is wonderful. For others, it's challenging. Maybe for some, it's too many choices. For example, if you go to get some ice cream and the only flavors available are chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, it won't take you long to pick the flavor you want, will it? But suppose you went into a gelato or 31 flavors place and there's all these flavors and they're unfamiliar and you don't know what they're like. It can be a little hard to decide, can it? Too many choices. So briefly, our path structure, which we're gonna use in this, is the same for all paths. They all have five levels and they get more challenging as you go from level one to five. We're not worrying about levels one and two because there's really no choices to make. But in levels three, four, and five, there are a set of required projects. There are also electives. What turns out to be interesting is that those required projects essentially define each path. Even though there are 14 projects in every path, it's really just three. And five has two, but only one of them is different. So let's see how this works. I didn't get this from Toastmasters. I did this by staring at all the paths to look at. They are grouped by the skills you learn, competencies, if you will. On one side, we have the public speaking focus, what Toastmasters is known for, or what practically every project requires is public speaking. But remember, Pathways is, integrates the communications and the leadership aspects. So some of them have more emphasis on leadership. And again, we're talking about interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, and management competencies. How does it work? There's four groups. I'm gonna explain how they work. Group one is all on public speaking. Group two is mostly public speaking with some focus on leadership project. 
Group three has additional weighting on leadership projects and group four has substantial. Let's now take a look and see what these are like. So in group one, which we said is the public speaking only, is only speeches. All required projects are speeches. Because there are electives, a member may choose to pick up a more leadership project oriented thing. But if you look at the required, which again we said defines the paths, they're all speeches. Leadership all projects and electives. Level five project. Now I'm focusing on level five because the level five is the most challenging project you will do in any path. So the level five required also effectively sets the standard for what that path is about. Level five projects in this group are simply longer speeches. Nothing different, just longer speeches. What paths are in this group? There are two of them. Presentation mastery is in the original set and engaging humor, which is a recent path that was just added. The second group, we're gonna call this light leadership focus. In these required projects in this group, you're gonna plan and possibly do modest projects. We're talking about very modest projects, the things that can be done in a, actually part of a meeting or in a small, small time limit. And then you give a speech about it. The level five project, which again, we can think of as setting the standard for the path, would be to plan and possibly complete a very modest project. These are minor things, uh, simple events, things like that, not, not complex at all. What paths are in this group? Leadership development, motivational strategies, and visionary communications. Third group. This is public speaking, but it has more of a leadership project content. I'm gonna call it moderate leadership. On these level five projects, you're gonna create and develop plans, not just by yourself, but uh, there's a team gonna be included. Level five projects includes all of the level fives in this group require serving at least six months in a leadership role. What leadership role? Could be a club officer, it could be a district committee chair, it could be something you do at work. Some kind of thing where you are in a leadership role, there's no other preparation, just serve in the role. And then naturally give a speech about it. The paths include dynamic leadership, strategic relationships, and team collaboration. On to the fourth group. Public speaking plus what we might call substantial leadership. And here you're gonna also create and develop plans for the team, but these projects and the way you go about them are more substantial in a broader scope than group three. Level five projects, the, the level five required project in this group is a high performance leadership project. Of course, a guidance committee and an action team that is a very well-organized, thought-through, collaborative effort to complete a non-trivial project. For those of you that have been in Toastmasters for a while before Pathways, this HPL, the Pathways HPL, is very, very similar in its scope and methodology as the one in our traditional program. The paths in this group are effective coaching, innovative planning, and persuasive influence. So let's roll them all up together on one screen. We have the public speaking path, group one, presentation, mastery, and engaging humor. Group two is what we call leadership light, light leadership, pick your term. Leadership development, motivational strategies, and visionary communications. Group three, which I call moderate leadership, has dynamic leadership, strategic relationships, and the team collaboration path. And group four, which we could call strong or substantial leadership, includes the paths for effective coaching, innovative planning, and persuasive influence. Now you might be asking yourself, well that's interesting, but what's the relative popularity of these? Let's look at that. The most adopted path 
is innovative planning. This is as reported by headquarters. The second one is presentation mastery up on the public speaking group. The third one is dynamic leadership in the moderate leadership group. Fourth is back to the strong leadership effective coaching. And the fifth one is leadership development. So all of these are represented. So my thought I wanna leave you with here is that Pathways offers choices. And the thing to keep in mind is that whatever your goals in Toastmasters, whatever you joined Toastmasters, there's probably a path that's just right for you. So pick your favorite flavor and enjoy. Madam Toastmaster. Uh, your mic, Elaine. You gave us such great visuals uh, that we did not go nuts. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and now we're on to our third and final speech of the evening. This is with our new president for the 2019 to 2020 year in online presenters, Lois Margolin. She is working on team collaboration level one, mastering fundamentals. The title of her speech is Touring Online Presenters in 2019 to 2020. The executive board has some interesting ideas for the new year and we wanna share them with the club, says Lois. Our president, distinguished Toastmaster Lois Margolin, is ready to take us on a tour of what we can expect in the upcoming year. Please help me welcome our president, Lois Margolin. Thank you, Elaine. How long is your speech, Lois? Pardon Five my interruption. Five to seven minutes. I'm sorry? Five to seven minutes. Five to seven minutes. Thank you for the clarification. Welcome to Online Presenters 2019-2020. I am excited to be your in your president, not even your incoming president. We have a lot of interesting things that are going on here. And during the speech, we're going to be talking about getting to know your executive board. The future is bright and how you can help online presenters. Knowing your executive board into the 2019-2020 executive board. Let's take a moment and thank last year's executive board because they did an amazing job. We had our president, Jimmy Dent, <laughs> vice president of education, Roger Fung, membership, vice president of public relations, Dagmara Sitek, our secretary, Monica Tucker, treasurer, David Carr, and sergeant at arms, Scott Johnson. Let's give them one big round of applause. And now we come into welcoming our 2019-2020 executive board. Well, that's me, President. And John Quick, I looked for a lot of pictures, but he's always so small in those pictures. But this is him, in case you don't know him. Our Toastmaster of the day, Madam Elaine, is our Vice President of Membership. Our Vice President of Public Relations is Jacinta Watkins. Our Secretary is Monica Tucker. Treasurer is David Carr. And rolling it out, Sergeant at Arms is Lou Brown. The future is indeed bright. I am really looking forward to this upcoming year. And I want to tell you some of the things that are not going to be changing. We are going to continue having our monthly speech a coordinated by Roger Fung. Thank you, Roger. We appreciate you keeping this and letting it through. We are going to have two contests per year, a webinar and a video speech contest and all members will have a mentor. But as a president, what's new? We're going to simplify our opening. Instead of our long two and a half or two minute opening, we're just going to say, we're recording this. If you don't want it to be recorded, please let us know. That will eventually roll over to our Sergeant at Arms, Lou Brown. The 15 minutes afterwards, it is not going to be mandatory. If people want to stay, they can stay, but we're not going to require somebody to stay during this time. And we are going to vote in all members, whereas last year we were really just voting in the members that didn't have all the Toastmaster requirements. 
but our Vice President of Education also has some new stuff that's coming in. We are going to renew our quarterly guest speakers and go out there and look for those speakers that can help us become better presenters. We're going to have our members sign up for the Toastmaster of the Day role instead of assigning it, and we're hoping that that will work. Otherwise, we'll go back to assigning it. John has agreed now. John hasn't seen this, but I think he's going to be okay with all of this. He's going to find a computer-generated program that will create themes and word day for the entire year. Of course, our Toastmaster of the Day can change that theme and the word of the day. And lastly, John, with his creativity, is going to create a video of roles with examples. What's new with our Vice President of Membership? We are going to be inducting our new members on the first Monday of the month. Elaine's going to be sending out congratulation emails, and in those emails, we are going to have that long video that is still recorded so politely and so nicely. And lastly, we are going to create membership welcome certificates. Buddy, here is your certificate, and Elaine will be mailing this to you. And no, I didn't do that just because you were my evaluator. It just happened to work out that way. For our public relations, Jacinta wants to create a newsletter, do more hype about recognizing level five completion and the icebreakers, write blogs and encourage members to update their member profile. Do you know, I was looking through the member profiles. Not many of us has updated our pictures. Please make sure you go online and update your picture. It's important. And Jacinta wants to write an article for the Toastmaster magazine and David Carr and Jacinta are gonna get together to work back. David Carr is also adding an explanation postmaster role on the website. In case for some of you newer members, you might not recognize that David is also our webmaster. And a new member listing. So as you can see next to the RSVP, we can see the last five members that have been added to our club. And as you can see, Buddy is our latest member. The question comes up now, how you can help? Well. Step number one is commit. Sign up for the Toastmaster of the day. Don't make us hunt you down. Join the Determination Inactive Member Committee. So we have a quorum. For those of you who don't really understand how this part works, the majority of our members have to vote in order for us to pass something. If we have 50 members, which I think right now we're at 49, so let's round it up. We have 50 members. We have to have 25 members online to have a quorum to make a vote count. That's a lot of members. You can see today we have 20 members online. If we can determine inactive members, maybe someone who hasn't attended in the last two or three months, we can lower that membership number down, which enables us to have proper votes. Because last year, some of you will remember poor Roger sending emails, please sign in so we can vote. You can also promote online presenters on social media and help Jacinta by writing a blog. And lastly, provide other speaking slots. If you're already signed up in the month, maybe you let other members speak and maybe you're the backup speaker. These are all the things that we're excited about in the new year. I will be sending this to the executive board just in case they forgot what we all can do. But overall, it's an exciting time and I'm looking forward to it. And I do have a few moments. I see I'm on yellow, but I'm not on red yet. Do we have any questions from the group? If not, that will be fine. We're going to end it here. However, if later on you come up with some additional questions or you have ideas that you would like to present, your executive board is here to serve and would love to hear it. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, President Lois, for this inspiring overview of our upcoming year and the changes and, uh, and the acknowledgement of the past officers and the great group who has stepped forward to serve this year. I would now like to ask our timer, Nick Lacani, did all of our speakers qualify for being voted on? Nick, 
There Madam you go. Toastmaster? Madam Toastmaster? Yes, yes. they'll qualify. I'm putting the actual speech times into the chat right now. And uh, yes, all three are available for voting. Thank you. Okay, so now would be the time to enter into the chat and send privately your vote for the best speaker to Chris Gould, our speaker, our, our excuse me, our vote counter for the evening. And now we will move on to the next portion of our evening, the very exciting period of table topics. And I'm very happy to welcome Graham to take over the reins. Graham. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just 10 minutes for table topics according to the agenda. Uh, and I do have five table topics that I have chosen for tonight. So I would ask each of the recipients to please Aim for the one minute minimum that you're expected to do, but then don't feel that you have to go to the two if you don't want to. All of them are related to the theme. And I'm going to start with the, the very concept of almonds in Almond Joy and almond milk, which is re really big in Australia. But I imagined with almond milk, these milkmaids sitting on tiny little stools, milking the little almonds to try and get the milk out. What I would like to know is when have you had a misconception that has proved to be completely off the wall? John, you're our first Table Topics participant tonight. So when have you had a misconception that has been off the wall? Mr. Table Topics Master, keeping with the uh, substitute food sort of theme, my misconception was in uh, eating a meatless burger patty. And there's uh, Beyond Meat is the brand that they sell around here. And it's a type of burger patty that really my initial thought was that's going to taste horrible. There's just no way in heck can they create something that tastes even close to a burger. And yet, at the first time I tried it, I was rather surprised that it didn't taste bad, it actually tasted pretty good. And then as you bite into it, you find that there's a actual juice coming out of it. And you're like, but this is just protein powder and pea powder and all sorts of things combined. What is this stuff coming out? Turns out that it's beet juice. So they add beet juice to this substitute meat patty so that when you bite into it, you actually get some pink looking stuff coming out of it. So that's one time that I was very surprised by what I actually experienced. Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you, John. One of the things about chocolate, and we're talking about chocolate and almond joy, and it is in fact International Chocolate Day a couple of days ago, forget this almond stuff. The thing about chocolate is that when it was first introduced into Europe, it wasn't eaten or drunk, as the case may be, by poor people. It was only eaten or drunk by the rich because they were the only ones who could afford it. It was literally a case of conspicuous consumption. A sill. Can you tell me about a time when you've seen people spending money just to show off? Tell me about a time when you've observed that, uh, Asil. I um, experienced that in my country when they do weddings and they spend a lot of money just to be so off. They do this, um, they organize as a um, big event, uh, inviting uh, musicians, spending money on that. And also there was an unusual wedding when they um, actually did, um, they, they opened the door and um, the car came to the wedding full of um, jewelry. So that was impressive. But um, you know that uh, it took 
uh, spending lots of money. I think uh, that is not my case to do that, but it was impressive. So about uh, chocolate, today as a theme, I think a balanced diet is a ch chocolate in both hands. So, <laughs> <laughs> so today uh, we are enjoying uh, our table topics. So good luck with that. Thank you. That's Thank enough. you, Phil. A balanced diet, yes. Uh, and a bit like Armand Joy would be an arm, uh, you know, a chip on each shoulder. Um, one of the things about chocolate is that chocolate actually isn't often eaten in the countries where it is produced. The, the level of consumption of chocolate is really quite low in countries like the Dominican Republic, which makes me think about the things that others think are wonderful about our area, for example, but that we never go to. So, Victor, I know we can't see you, but we can hear you. Can you tell us about something around your area that visitors would love, but that you just never get a chance to do. Did you speak to me? No, that was to Victor. To Victor, okay. Thank you, Master Table Topic. I hope I said that correct. In my area, we have a lot of museums and art galleries, and anyone that comes to Chicago that's one of the first things I asked them to do or ask them if they've done it before, which was, which is to visit a field museum that we have here, which is full of dinosaur bones and a lot of prehistoric material or an art gallery, which I truly enjoy. However, living in Chicago doesn't really allow me or it makes me take for granted the fact that in about 15 minutes I can drive down to downtown Chicago and visit one of these art galleries or museums. So I would say that that's an example of something that I would take for granted and ask other people to do but don't myself do much of. Thank you, Master Table Topic Master. Thank you, Big Dad. Well done. Uh, and well done for the first time in some time, I understand. So great that you did that. Um, I looked around, because we don't have almond joy in Australia, and I looked around for almond stuff in my house. And the only almond I could find was almond hammer, which was baking powder, which is sitting in my fridge to absorb smells. Lou, tell us about a household, hip, a household tip that you can pass on to all of us. Something like putting baking soda in your fridge. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. Interesting question. I find it interesting because I am not one of those people that comes up with these household hacks. However, with that said, as I was watching YouTube the other day, for some reason, a household hack video came up in my suggested video feed. So I was intrigued because this one was entitled something like, 50 ways to use a rubber band. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I can probably only think of three. So how do you come up with 50? One in particular that really caught my eye as I was going through the video, because some of them were quite frankly, a little too, in my opinion, simplistic for a, re a really good use of a rubber band. So I kind of skipped through. So I got to this part where I saw the person put a coffee mug on the table pour some hot water in the coffee mug. And I'm like, hmm, where's this going? Because I'm an avid coffee drinker and sometimes tea drinker. So that caught my eye to begin with. And all of a sudden, in went the tea bag. And as some of you who may also be tea drinkers may have experienced, oftentimes when you put that tea bag in there, the whole darn string and that little square at the end of it goes in with the water. And you're like, darn it, I don't want... Now I have to pick this out and my fingers get hot and all this stuff. Anyway, the person took the string with the square, the little piece of wooden square at the bottom, paper square, I should say, put it on the side of the mug, took a rubber band and just put it around the cup and the 
teabag stayed floating in the water with the string out of your way. I was like, oh my goodness, that is so incredible. Why didn't I think of that? So Mr. Topics Master, that is my contribution to a item that we otherwise wouldn't think has 50 uses. Mr. Thank Topics you. Master. Thank you, Lou. Thank you for that household tip. I'll turn that hack into part of my life hacks. One last table topic, one last person who doesn't get a chance to speak this meeting otherwise. And so, joy. Almond joy is not something that we have here in Australia, I just mentioned. You live, as you mentioned, in two continents. What's something that you have at home that they don't have in the US or that they have in the US that you don't have at home? That's you, Joy, and we need your microphone. There are so many things that I have and others don't have and vice versa. When we first came to the US, it, it was about five years ago. We, my husband and I, we each had one luggage with our clothes. And then we were looking to rent a furnished apartment. And in the end, we ended up buying a house, a four bedroom house that was fully furnished with linens and all cookware. And I started going through the cupboards figuring out what do we now own and I found so many things I didn't know how what to use them for then luckily I had learned, learned to know one of my neighbors a retired woman and I invited her over for co coffee one day and I had gathered all big amount of stuff on our kitchen table and I was asking Tell me, what is this used for? And then she told me, and I wrote down, and then I put it back into some cupboard. And most of those things I still haven't used for anything. But some that I found out while I was now cleaning my cupboards were all these nice dishes, bowls and plates uh, that you can use in a microwave oven to to make omelettes and all kinds of stuff that are very fancy. Uh, and uh, I didn't remember what this uh, neighbor woman had told me about how to use them. But then I went to internet and I found on this stuff um, some kind of trademark or whatever and did the searching and then I found the instructions how to use them. So this is one thing. And my immediate reaction at that time was that there's so much unnecessary stuff on this continent that I have never seen, even though I have lived a long life and traveled a lot. So I think that that has been the biggest experience in my life about stuff I didn't know what they were and that we don't have, at least in Northern Europe. Thank you, Joy. Fabulous. Mr. Thorsmast. Well done. All right. Uh, thank you, Joy. Thank you, all of our uh, contributors. Uh, I'm not sure about timing. I'm pretty sure that uh, Nick will put the timing up into the, the box, but I'll now hand control back to our Toastmaster of the day. Elaine, all yours. I want to look in the chat here. It looks like everyone has qualified. So at this time, please send your votes for best table topic presenter either John, Asil, Victor, Lou, or Joy. These go to Chris Gould, our vote counter for the day. And now we are going to move on to the third part of the evening, the evaluations. And I'm turning things over to our general evaluator, Roger Fung. Take it away, Roger. Thank you very much, Madam T uh, Toastmaster of the evening. We are launching into our evaluation portion of the meeting. And those of you in the room, if you have some comments and notes that you want to pass on to our speakers of various type, go ahead and do that in your chat. We'll first start off with our prepared speakers. Our first speaker, Antoinette, is being evaluated by Jim Barber. Jim, please take it away. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, my fellow Toastmasters, our guest Victor, and especially, of course, Toastmaster Antoinette Trim. 
Antoinette tonight was talking about understanding your communication style, specifically personality in the workplace. Congratulations, Antoinette. This could have been a theoretical discussion of no value, but you didn't do that. Personality in the workplace, that's something practical. That's something useful. That's something most of us face every day. So that was a great choice of topic. It was a technical topic, but you described it in an interesting way. It never got boring. It didn't drag. So that was good. Overall, it was well-researched, it was well-written, well-structured, well-presented, did a good job across the board. Your vocals, your pronunciation, this was filled with difficult words, and yet you managed to go through those difficult words, pronouncing them correctly, or as far as I could tell, you pronounced them correctly. That was great. Your vocal variety was good. As I say, you, you didn't drag. This could have become uninteresting very easily, and you didn't do that. I have three suggestions for you. Two of them are easy. One of them is going to be a little more challenging. The two easy suggestions, you opened with your title. Don't do that. Elaine, I think, gave your title, but if she didn't, blow on past it. You had a great opening, but it was your second sentence. Just don't do the title. Go right with the opening that you had. That was great. The closing, same problem. You closed with thank you. Don't do that. That doesn't add anything to your speech. You had a great closing. You should have ended it right there. Now, this is going to be a little more of a challenge. You had good eye contact. You were looking at the camera, except when you were reading your notes. Now, it's not a problem reading notes. I'm doing that right now. But your problem is you put your notes down in front of you, so you were looking, you were doing that whenever you were reading your notes. And it was very obvious that you were doing it. If you had your notes like I do, which is off to the side of the camera, then you're looking over at your notes and it's not as obvious that you're looking away. You're looking more side to side rather than up to down. So how you're gonna go about doing this, this is a very physical thing, but you need to find some way of putting your notes up next to your camera so that you're going to have better eye contact with the camera. But this was a very good presentation of what could have been very boring and you didn't do that. This was a great presentation and I look forward to seeing what you're going to do next time, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Jim. As we continue on with our second speech from George, his speech is being evaluated by Megda. Please, Megda, take it away. Mr. General Evaluator, dear George and friends. George, congratulations on doing a really practical speech that's of value to most Toastmasters. I will now discuss your evaluation by the choice of your speech, the organization of it, and the audience's perception. My next, next task is to determine if you, George, the speaker, if you complied with your speech requirements and it was either an unfamiliar topic or something that you wish to know more about, and obviously you chose the latter one, and I'm glad because I've also learned something from it. It is also my task to check your speech structure or organization, to check for transitions, and the citation of sources. And all of these has got to help the audience to understand. What is press structure is concerned, I think you did a topical structure. You had points one, two, three, and four. And even your videos, your, your visuals, sticked, uh, stayed with that order, and it was, it was clear for us and easy to understand. What else do I want to say here? Uh, your visuals, yes, your PowerPoint, it was clear. Unfortunately, in this type of uh, presentation, it can be a bit wordy, but I don't think there's another way to do this, George, simply because it is an educational. It is not so much for entertaining, it is to teach and uh, to, for people to understand the different points. As far as your request is concerned on length, clarity, missing or extra items, I think your presentation was absolutely concise. It was very easy for me to follow. 
things to improve are now it's very easy to fall back on page number two. I'm not going to do that. I want to say that you started off with your story with the ice creams and that got my intention, <laughs> attention because I like ice cream. But this is what I want to say about the ice creams. I think you could have put in a little bit more emphasis on the light, the moderate and the substantial. I want to challenge you to work more with this ice cream theme. For instance, the light could be a single scoop, the moderate a double scoop, and the other one a triple scoop. And then I want to challenge you also to use the citations correctly. The citation to Toastmasters International website, and also, and this is also where I want to say to you, don't be too shy to quote yourself, because you can say the author, George Marshall, because you wrote this, and give us a proper citation. In conclusion, you are a credible speaker on this topic. It's relevant to this audience and wider Toastmasters, and it is very timely. George, you have the experience and the knowledge, and this is what I want to say to you. You did not just give us information. You gave us your added insights and wisdom. And for that, we thank you. Woohoo! Thank you, Magda. To round out our third evaluation on Lois's speech, it's our first time evaluator here in online presenter, Mr. Buddy. Buddy, take it away. Well, it's, uh, it's really um, fun to be back uh, in Toastmasters, but I'm uh, a little intimidated by all of the um, new uh, features um, uh, being online. Uh, Lois uh, did an excellent job. Um, I, I can tell that she's had a lot of practice uh, and has the skills. I recognize several um, good qualities. Since her project was team collaboration, the fact that she planned the year in advance uh, and invited us in to sort of made us feel like she was doing it for us and we were a part of the, the team uh, fit the project. Her introduction explained her goals for the speech and then she gave recognition to the previous um, officers and, and uh, the team members. So that, that's an important part of collaboration is uh, giving recognition to the team. Her, her voice was very positive and cheerful and that's another thing that leaders do is stay positive and, and encouraging. Um, she had excellent PowerPoint slides for an outline I think they were very informative, um, and yet she did not sound like she was reading the script. That's um, that's a skill to to sound like you're talking and not reading, even though you had all these points and she was following the script. Uh, I while we talking about the script, I noticed that we didn't see her face very often. We saw mostly. Uh, the outline. So we got the information which, you know, we could have read, but she uh, expressed it with with nonverbal communication, which certainly amplified the uh, the text. But I would have liked to have seen her um, in, interrupt the slides with her face a bit more often. And um, Towards the end, it looked like she started to run out of time. And when the yellow light came on, she started to speak faster and faster. Uh, there was a little bit of a speed up at the end. So maybe the timing was uh, something that she had not uh, planned for exactly or, or tested. But um, overall, it was a very impressive speech. And, and I look forward to participating in all of those things this year. She offered to take questions at the end, uh, which is a good thing for, uh, again, uh, getting buy-in from the audience. Very good speech, Lois. Good job. 
Thank you, buddy. Megda and Jim, three very different evaluation, all very insightful and educational. I don't know if I can call it nutritional, but maybe a little stretch there. Let us continue on with feedback from the other role holders. Let's first hear from our timer and see if our three evaluator have made it on time. I see that it is in the text box. Thank you. Jim and Buddy have qualified. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Yeah, uh, two uh, made it for the uh, vote, Jim and Buddy. And um, uh, those two are within time. Thank you very much, Mr. General Thank Evaluator. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Timer. Please go ahead and cash your vote for either Jim or Buddy as your favorite evaluator for the evening and send it to our vote counter, Chris Goal. Let's move on to the next person, Jim Goal. Tell us, as the watcher, what did you see tonight? Thank you, uh, Mr. General Evaluator. I was looking around, I took some notes even, and I saw some some really good backgrounds. People were paying attention. I think people are starting to realize that, that these things are sets here behind us. And we start to, we start to, you know, find these things and everyone is getting into this green screen stuff and some look better than others. But on the whole, I think we do a really, really, really good job. Uh, camera placement is good. Lighting seems to be improving, and and just some of the backgrounds are are very interesting. I I really do like the natural ones too. Like Jim Barber has a real nice plain wall in the back there. I like that Joy is bringing her her Grand Canyon and the whole Arizona thing together with a T-shirt in the background. I thought that's nice. Uh, Asil looks like she might be in a jail. It's a bright place, but it's the wall. the The bars on the wall on the windows are interesting. <laughs> and of course, our Toastmaster of the day, Elaine, had brought her a home and joys and made me hungry all the whole time. I really do like Deborah's fruit, though. That's 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 a nice background. Everybody does well. I hope everybody continues and uh, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Watcher. I guess it's important to find out where the seal is on which side of the bars. That would be important, but we'll leave that for now. Let's move over <laughs> to our R counter, Deborah Spears. What did you hear tonight or what did you not hear, Deborah? What I heard and what I did not hear. I did not hear any ahs or filler words from Lou, or I'm sorry, Louise, my apologies. I heard one so from George, and I believe I heard one off from Antoinette. I'm not 100% sure with that one. I heard one off from our Toastmaster of the Day, Lame. I did not hear any filler words from Victor or Roger. Just at the end, I heard an awe from Jim <laughs> at the very end. I heard one awe from Magda. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I heard two awes from Graham, one um from Graham, and two so's from Graham. I heard three souls from John. And is it Elise? Elise? Did I pronounce your name correctly? I hope so. I heard four souls. And um, I just heard one ah from me. <laughs> Victor, one so. Louis, three souls. I'm not sure if, and I'm like, is a filler word, but Lewis, Lou said, and I'm like, I've said it before myself, but I'm <laughs> just the joy. I heard, I didn't hear any. And Nick, I heard three ahs. That's it. Thank you, Deborah, for a very thorough report on some of our crutch words. Let's all remember what we 
have done and not done and continue to work on that. I'm sorry, my apologies. Um, I, I left for the end, buddy, the, evalu the, newest, the newest evaluator. There were several ahs and ums. I think I stopped counting at about 15. <laughs> so. All right, well, thank you. Well, well, welcome back to Toastmasters, buddy. <laughs> Let you. me move over to Jimmy Dan, our grammarian. Let us know what you found today from our meeting. Okay. Well, I'll start first with the gra grammarian's role. And I actually liked in Antoinette's introduction that was given the term baby steps. Even though it wasn't what she did, it was in the introduction and it helps to paint a picture. I like the phrases George used of light leadership focus and moderate leadership focus and substantial leadership focus, because that kind of pictures, gives you a picture of scales without him actually doing the graphical skills. But on the graphical side, I think the use of three ice cream flavors and then the 31 flavors array, it was, it was in a graphic, grammar because it, it really helped to drive home what you couldn't describe in words if you just said three flavors versus 31. I liked Lois's phrase when she said the future is bright in her PowerPoint because I could see that at the end of a tunnel or a long path a bright light. Graham used the conspicuous consumption phrase which I liked. It's 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 uh, much more descriptive and, and colorful. Asil used the balanced diet with chocolate in both hands. And I could just picture, you know, a human being being a weight scale with chocolate weighing down one hand or the other hand. And then Magna used in her evaluation the word double scoop when she was talking about George's speech. And that, that gives you a picture too of a scale comparing one to another. Now on the word of the day, I didn't hear that much. I find it difficult to listen for word of the day and listen for grammar. But Jim was the first one to use it in the chat window, Jim Barber. And Roger used it in between, I think the, the evaluators are table topic speakers. And that's all I detected. Right. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Let us move over to Sybil, our chat monitor. What really stood out? Tell us. Really stood out was Nick's uh, attention to timing. He, at the very beginning of the meeting, he asked if anybody had timing requirements in the chat. And then after each um, evaluation timer, uh, evaluation, the speeches and the table topics, he posted all the time. I thought that was very useful. And like I had mentioned before, a lot of talk about chocolate and uh, Almond Joys versus Mounds conversations at the very beginning and uh, some conversations about the word neuroticism, how to pronounce it, what it could mean. And at the very end, a lot of chat about backgrounds, but not a lot of chatting um, in general. And so I just wanted to give you a uh, summary of what I saw the chat. All right, thank you very much. If you are interested in saving the chat, you can go ahead and click on the more button in the chat box and save a copy for yourself. As a general evaluator, I do have three points I want to raise and highlight. Number one, we did start on time right from, the, right from uh, seven, you know, six, or 7.45 uh, Eastern, and that was good. Our Toastmaster of the day, my one suggestion would be toward the beginning of the meeting also repeat or announce the pairing of the speaker and evaluator once more because things, things can change so many times at the last sec second so that not only do those six people know what's going on, but that the rest of the meeting or the members also know who's pairing with whom. One comment for all three of our speaker, interestingly, the internet mentioned about personality. My challenge and encouragement to all three is to allow your personality to come out even more. All three speeches was well done, well informed, very organized, 
I would love to see more George. I would love to see more Lois. I would love to see more Antoinette. In fact, Antoinette, there was one point when you start strutting a little bit, I thought you would keep going because I want that personality. So I would encourage all three and every one of our speakers to infuse your personality into your speech. With that said, let me turn the time over to our vote counter. Chris, let us know who are the winners for this evening. Need a little drum roll here. And we have our best table topics, Lou Brown. Woo! Our best evaluator, Jim Barber. And best speaker of the day goes to George Marshall. Woo! Congratulations to all of our winners. Allow me to turn our meeting over to our presiding officer, our president, Madam Lois Mangolan. Thank you, Roger. Well, let's give the winners a round of applause. They did a great job. I have a couple of items that I'd like to mention. We have a speech-a-thon. Does anybody know when that is? Okay, I've got a couple of nods. Lou, when is it? July 13th. That's right. And Jacinta is going to be hosting that, but she needs your help. Sign up if you have longer speeches or you would like to help out, please let her know and sign up today. We also need a Toastmaster of the Day for next Monday. Do I have any takers? Ooh, Lou. All right, I'm gonna sign you up, Mr. Lou. Victor, as our guest, what did you think of the meeting? Hello. I really enjoyed the meeting. It's been different since this is my first time doing anything online. Uh, and I, I feel like it's very informative and I would say it's been a joy. Wonderful. Well, we hope we'll see you next week also. Well, we hope we'll see you next week, literally and figuratively. That is all I have to mention. Does anyone else have any problems, questions, concerns? All right, we are going to wrap it up. I'm going to stay for a few minutes if anybody has any questions. Roger? One follow-up on the speech-a-thon. Whether you have a long one or a short one, you are welcome to give a speech. You're welcome to come on as an evaluator because as you evaluate others, you get better at your improving your own speeches also. So dive in, sign up, and with Jacinta as our Toastmaster of that uh, speech-a-thon, I look forward to a very fun time this Saturday. Absolutely. And remember, if you have any ideas for the new executive board, let us know. We're here for you. And with that, at 8.58, I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting and allow people to stay on in case they have